All right, so I'm working on the final revisions of our board. Uh, for the most part, we've been working with the breakout for the three sensors, and now we need an actual final board in order to test out our device. So I've been doing the software on EagleCAD. All right, so uh, currently I'm working on the drivers right now for the three sensors. Uh, I'm just looking through the data sheet of the gyroscope right now, looking at the re register values and seeing which ones to write uh, functions for and be able to change the settings on the functions or the sensors themselves. So our board just came in uh, that we ordered two weeks ago and I'm just trying to solder it right now and hopefully it works. Right, there we go. Hey, I think I found the short! So one of the major issues we were having was collecting the data from the sensors. So the idea was that we have the sensors collecting the raw data to a its internal FIFO buffer. Once it reached a certain threshold, it would then send an interrupt telling the processor to extract the data, calculate it, and then go to sleep. While all this is happening, the sensors will continue to collect data and this is a lot easier said than done. Right now I'm working on sensor conversions. Uh, we're essentially taking the raw data from each of the sensors and from there converting it to their intended units. So for the accelerometer it would be converting to meters per second, gyroscope would be degrees per second, and the magnetometer would be uh, micro teslas. It's kind of hard to control. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Cooking that board. For our first revision, this is the PCB that we ended up getting with. The only issue with this one, it's pretty big, and you know it wouldn't look very good on someone's arm. So we decided to make it a lot smaller. So for our second revision, we actually removed a lot of these header pins, and we ended up to take a different approach for programming. So um, we ended up shrinking it down to this size. And what we ended up doing is uh, using what is called pogo pins, which has these small little uh, springs that kind of program or make contact with small pads on the bottom of the board. And by placing it on top of these, we're able to uh, program straight from the bottom board onto the top one without the use of header pins. So now, when we actually compare the size, it's a lot smaller. So to have an actual comparison of what the board looks like, it is significantly smaller. Really working with the arch now. For the first iteration of the enclosure for our device, it was essentially a box. Our device is a wearable device that has to be able to encase the entire device while also being wearable and unintrusive to the wearer. So we're working on designs like this that, can, that you can wear on your wrist and when it's on your wrist it's hardly noticeable. And this would encase everything. Your battery, your, your device, and it allows for charging via USB. So there's gonna be a hole for the USB charging. All the enclosure stuff was done in Blender and 3D modeling and printed on 3D printer. We're still working on a final, final design for the enclosure. So right now I'm working on MATLAB to design some algorithms for sensor fusion. So I managed to find this uh, library for Quaternion. So I'm going to use Quaternions to do sensor fusion and we're, once we get it working, we're going to convert it to C and upload it to the PSAW. Let's hope it works. So for sensor fusion, we start with the gyroscope and it measures in degrees per second. And so to get orientation, we integrate it and so we get degrees. But when we integrate it, we also get noise and the gyroscope begins to drift. And so the gyroscope itself uses itself as a reference so it doesn't know up down left right 
And so to correct the vertical drift, we use the gravity vector of the accelerometer to anchor the gyroscope. And in the same sense, to correct horizontal drift, we use the magnetometer, which tells the direction of true north. And so by combining all these sensors, we get sensor fusion. After being able to implement our code on MATLAB, we had to convert everything into C so that it would be compatible with the PSOC device. So in order to do that, we used one of MATLAB's programs uh, called CodeGen, which automatically transfers all the MATLAB code and converts it. The issue with this though is that uh, some of the files did not work properly and uh, we had to go through and debug uh, through the code and figure out where it is that CodeGen didn't convert it properly. Uh, eventually after looking through we had to implement our own functions uh, through our own code and we were able to uh, get it all working together. Well, apparently the Quaternia library we're using uses cell arrays and apparently MATLAB can convert it to C. So I've been spending the past few days reading up on Quaternia math. That stuff is not intuitive at all. So right now I'm writing the custom functions by hand. I'm really hoping this works. Because you do it also a lot even though you don't know it's just like I'm going to try that. Let's go to sleep. Okay. For our device, we're using Bluetooth Low Energy and a custom-built service to transfer rotational data from our peripheral device to our central device. The data being transferred is a four-element float array. The main reason behind choosing BLE for our device was because of the low energy. When running our device standalone without transferring the data via Bluetooth, we noticed that our device slept 12.48% of the time. When implementing Bluetooth low energy, our device slept 73.55% of the time. That's a 60% increase in sleep time, which is a huge difference in power consumption. So Bluetooth low energy drastically reduce the power consumption of our device while sending data very accurately and very fast. Uh, we had to do it on QT.